So I'm going to move Grit out, grab a couple puppies, and then meet you over at Muddy's whelping box. We'll move a couple of them over. Very similar in size, and they are only three days apart. Hey guys, Kat here from Standing Stone, and today I want to talk to you about surrogating puppies. What that means, why you may need to do it, and how to go about surrogating puppies properly if you do need to. So a couple of things to keep in mind is surrogating puppies is taking puppies from one litter and moving them to a mother um, that may have some puppies as well still or may have no puppies um, through complications of labor. So we have a unique situation here. We have Grit's litter. She has nine puppies and we have Muddy's litter. She has three puppies. These two litters were born three days apart. So are very close in age, which is an important part of deciding if you can surrogate puppies and when you can surrogate puppies. Having a close in age gap is really important because puppies develop very quickly and we don't want those puppies to become too strong that we're trying to add additional puppies to so that competition for milk supply um, doesn't push some puppies off. Another reason that you may need to surrogate is if your female potentially passes away from complications of a C-section and you need to find someone, somebody's mom, somebody's female, to take care of the puppies that you do have. Um, the opposite can happen as well where you have a female and you lose all of the puppies and she has a lot of milk supply as well as potentially very anxious, not having her puppies, and you can find some puppies to move on to her. Um, and then how to go about doing the surrogation process is really important as well. You want to keep in mind breed size compatibility. You don't want to be taking small sized breed puppies and trying to surrogate onto a larger breed mama um, for nipple size, as well as if that mama does have puppies that you're also adding these little puppies to. Competition would be really strong and vice versa. You don't want to move large breed puppies onto a small breed dog because they're going to require much more milk than that mama is going to be able to supply. And and we want to make sure not only are our puppies healthy, but our mamas are healthy. And with this situation, both Grit's puppies are doing great, they're gaining weight. Muddy's puppies are doing great, and they're gaining weight. But with this situation of the puppies being so close in age, we can even out the litter, which also evens out the stress and the load on the mamas by saying, okay, we're going to move three of Grit's puppies onto litter, uh, Muddy's litter, which will mean six puppies on each litter. Uh, which will be a lot easier for mamas to handle and take care of. So we're going to go in and we're going to look at Grit's puppies. I'm going to show you which puppies I'm choosing and why, and then how I'm going to move those puppies to Muddy's litter. Because not only is it important to have the right size puppies, but you need to make sure that your mamas have similar temperaments. Both Muddy and Grit are great moms. This isn't their first rodeo. They have had litters before, so they know how to care for puppies. Um, those puppies um, are always well taken care of, so the temperament of mamas is important, and knowing what to do and how to care for the puppies is important, and then monitoring that process of transferring those puppies to make sure that mama continues to take care of those puppies. When mamas are nursing and then these first couple of weeks, a lot of hormones are released, which allows mom to have that mothering, nurturing instinct kick in. And that's the ideal time to move puppies from one litter to another. So let's go peek at Grit's puppies and we'll show you what that looks like. So this is Grit's litter of nine wiggly puppies. Um, there are definitely some smaller puppies like you can see here. Here's one of the smaller puppies. Um, we take really um, good records of puppies weight gain throughout that first week to make sure puppies are all gaining really well and you can even visually see a size discrepancy in these puppies this puppy's healthy this puppy is still gaining weight but it is definitely smaller than some of its litter mates so um with the ability to move some of these puppies over to Muddy. I'm going to choose the smaller puppies because they're going to be more compatible to the size of puppies from Muddy's litter because they're three days younger. Um, and puppies grow a lot in those first three days, which is why I keep track of weight gain every day um, with each litter. So I have 
Grit and Thunder's litter information here and the Muddy Rooster litter information here. And I can tell you that um, one of the puppies that I'll be moving, his name is Hawkeye. And then I have Drax and Nebula. I bet you can pick out what my litter theme is for the Grit Thunder litter. Um, and those puppies are all right in, um, Drax being the smallest is 320 grams and Hawkeye being the biggest right now of the three puppies is 488 grams. Um, whereas the Muddy Rooster puppies, I have Silt, Clay, and Loam, which I bet you can guess my litter theme there too. Um, we have 400 grams, 464 grams, and 480 grams. So very similar in size, and you'll be able to see that when I move them, how closely they look um, to each other. So Grit is actually Muddy's mama. So again, like I mentioned, temperament and nurturing ability, very similar um, personalities. So this transition should be pretty easy. Grit is a really good mama. She cleans her puppies well, she nurses them well. So making sure that the mama you're moving puppies to has um, those good mothering instincts is important as well. Because she has such good mothering instincts, I want to make sure that I'm not stressing her out or making her anxious about taking puppies from her litter um, because she knows when I take a puppy away. Now, she can't actually count. I mean, you're really a nice, smart mama, but I don't think you can count. So in order to make her less anxious, I'm actually going to take her out put her in a crate. I'm going to take the three puppies that I'm moving to Muddy's litter away. And then I'm going to bring her back to her remaining puppies. So she won't necessarily notice that there are any that have been removed from her litter. But again, we're also going to continue monitoring how mama acts after we move these puppies so that if she's acting anxious or depressed or anything like that, we can make an adjustment. Sometimes just an additional calcium supplement can help mamas feel less anxious. So I'm going to move grit out, grab a couple puppies, three to be exact, and then meet you over at Muddy's Whelping Box. So I'm going to move in with these puppies into Muddy's space. She's interested in checking them out, which is good. Ideally, if I could have her nursing her puppies while these ones are introduced, that would be great, but she's just curious and that's fine. And I'm watching how she's interacting because when mama's nurse, that also releases hormones, like I said, to increase that mothering instinct. So I'm gonna just set them down in here and again, watching how mama interacts with them. I'm gonna move a couple of them over. You can see though, very similar in size and they are only three days apart. Um, the nice thing too about their ages, Muddy's had a couple days with her puppies, Grit's had some days with her puppies as well. So definitely the puppies have all gotten colostrum from their mamas, which is again, an ideal situation and not always the case when the need for surrogating is there. But now that we've moved the puppies, it'll also be an important process to watch how Muddy interacts with them and continue monitoring the weight gain on both litters to make sure that nothing changes and we're still seeing a good weight gain. But this evening the load on both moms will really be good for them um, as far as the stress of producing enough milk. Um, she's licking them, which is a great indication that she's willing to take care of them because licking puppies helps stimulate them to go to the bathroom, um, helps keep them clean. Yep, there's no more puppies in that basket now. I'm going to see if I can encourage her to lay down, but I'm not gonna force it, and then see if I can also get a few puppies um, both her puppies and the new puppies latched and nursing. So she's licking, she's licking all of them, including the new ones, doing a lot of sniffing and licking, which is good. Good job, mama. And I will definitely be able to tell, oh, that's good, mama, laying down nice, good. I'll definitely be able to tell which puppies are which, not only because I know the puppies and their markings, but my litter diagram allows me to keep track of all of that information, which um, can be found, that litter diagram, on our 
uh, website and I'll put the link in the description, but I'll be able to know which puppies I moved and keep track of their weight gains on, on all of the pertinent information. So I've marked which puppies I've moved and then I still have um, Muddy Rooster's litter information here and I can definitely compare my markings on the puppies from each litter um, and keep them straight. So puppies are pretty relaxed. Mama's loving on them and snuggling them, which is what I want to see. I'm going to try and snuggle a couple of them in maybe closer and see if they're interested in smelling new mom and latching. But monitoring the puppies and moms in this process is really important. Um, you know, we got one puppy over here nuzzling, sniffing around, already interested. Um, come on, come on, you too. A couple of Puppies snuggling in there. Gonna try and nurse already. Mama's already licking them and accepting them into her um, into her area, and they're gonna start latching on and nursing. And that's what I want to keep watching. We want to make sure that mom doesn't reject any of these puppies, and we want to make sure that um, she takes care of them. Which Muddy's a really good mom. Uh, I don't see this being an issue, but when you do the surrogation process, it is important to monitor the situation uh, for the health and well-being of the puppies and the mamas involved. And in this situation, was the need dire to have a surrogate? Uh, definitely not. Muddy is a good mom. Puppies were gaining weight well um, and taking care of them great. Grit same thing puppies were still gaining weight well she's doing a great job taking care of them but we had the unique situation where we could actually move and even up the litters so that it put less pressure and stress on grit to produce enough milk for those puppies especially as they get older and are requiring more to continue gaining weight well um, and that will lighten the load a little bit for her and also um, help muddy because she's going to have a lot of milk production and then this way we don't have quite as much worry for things like mastitis when those teats aren't getting drained as much as they truly need to be. So she's doing a good job. We're going to let her settle in with them. Um, puppies are already latched and nursing from Grit's um, litter as well as we can snuggle in a couple of uh, Muddy's puppies up in here too to make sure that everybody's getting along good in the hood. There we go, Mama. Good job. Good job, Muddy. We will keep you updated on how this process progresses and how these puppies are doing de developmentally. Um, I'm Cat the Dog Trainer, and we will see you in their next video. Mm -hmm.